growing up military, military brat. Welcome to our channels. Of course, we will link each other's information in the description below. And I know last time we did the collab, there was background noise. That was my son. I'm sorry. We fixed that this time. He's quiet now. <laughs> so we should be good. I'm going to go over like topics. First one would be grocery store. Where do we get our food? In the military, we're used to the term commissary. We just grew up with that. On base was a huge, very nice, lots of variety commissaries. It's a grocery store. Yeah, I remember like telling my friends like, oh, we gotta go to the commissary. And they'd be like, what, what's that? What, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm like, the commissary where you buy food. food. As a little girl, I didn't realize that people didn't know what the commissary was unless they were part of the military. The way it's true with any kid, you grow up accepting the world that you're in, not realizing how big it is and how right. much there is to it. One of the neat things that the commissary is really good at, and as far as I know, they still do it, was they have baggers. And when you oh, go up to check right. out, not only are they checking you out and bagging your stuff, but there's always the option of paper and plastic. The commissary was big on paper bags because you could keep them, reuse them, bring them back. And those baggers, they didn't just bag your food. They'll actually take your groceries yes. out to yes. your car in a special it was the cart grocery baggers cart. to yep. load up. And then, of course, you would tip them. You had to do. You should tip them. You didn't have to, but you should because that's all they got. They didn't get paid. Right. So they normally they were like other military brats, like young high people. schoolers. Yes. Uh, sometimes Young military adults. wives. That's true. There, there were there were some the, military yeah. wives there. Um, I remember like whenever we would go to other stores, and it was so weird to me that we had to carry our own groceries out to the car. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so like bratty, doesn't it? <laughs> but I was so used it was, to that it, it, that it, I was like, said, yeah. oh, this is weird. Very rarely did yeah. we go to like Walmart or Safeway or anything well, like that. When we were growing up, Walmart wasn't that much of a thing. It didn't get popular until in we were the 2000s yep. and such. Yep. Yeah. yeah also, true. prices were really cheap on base as far as the food, like right. meat especially. Most all bases have the commissary and BX just because, you know, sometimes there are standard stations. Base every standard base. Yeah, every, sometimes there are stations that are in the middle of nowhere yeah, and it's they too might far to drive to a grocery store anyway. So. Uh, next, explaining where you are from. This one's big. Yes. Whenever you get that question, whenever I get that question, I always stumble and kind of laugh and I'm not sure what to answer. Where am I from? Like, I mean, what does that really mean? Where do I live now? Where did I grow up? Where was I born? Because those are three different answers. And so that's why it's hard to answer that question. So I usually say, well, I'm a military brat. So that kind of answers the question why I'm not answering your question completely. <laughs> Born lived in Washington, live the most in Delaware currently, but it's a pretty close tie to another state. And then, yeah, long story to, to explain where you're from. <laughs> for an example, I have a list. Born, for me, and I'm the oldest, so I have like the biggest variety. Born in Florida, I lived there about two years, moved to Japan, lived there three years, then to Washington State. Where I was born. We lived one year off base in Edelweiss, Lacey, Washington. And then we moved on base and we stayed there for the next five years. I uh, took a cross-country trip that took up about, I think, a whole month. Anderson Air Force Base, Guam, two years. California, Southern California in the desert. Uh, we lived a year in California City, so off base, and then two years on base. Then Dad retired, moved out here to Delaware. And there was a whole adventure of when we first moved here. Mm, that's for another arrived. video, though. Yeah. And so Delaware, and then I, I went off to college, but they continued living in South Carolina, there you my go. My parents are still in South Carolina, and now I'm back here in Delaware. So, if you had that list that I just read of places that you've lived, what, is what would your, you say you're from? Yeah, like, <laughs> now what is your answer? I can say I'm from Florida because I was born there. True. But you I lived... You always say that. Growing up, the longest we lived was Washington State, six years. Yeah. But um, now, Delaware has been my home for 11 years total. Right. I'm from Delaware, but we also had <laughs> South Carolina. And that's where my fa my family right. uh, lives. My mom and dad live there now. So all over the place. Yeah. From all Typically, the place. if somebody asks me, and I'm not in Delaware when they're asking me, like if I'm traveling or whatever, and they ask me, I'll tell them I'm from Delaware because I'm not in my home state. They're wondering why I'm there. So I'm like, I'm from Delaware. <laughs> but if like I'm in Delaware and people are like, oh, where are you from? Then that's where it's a longer answer. All right, next one is, did we ever get our parents in trouble with the military or commanding officer? We specifically did not. Not us, because we're siblings amazing. Did. <laughs> our siblings did. Yeah. Looking at you, Jacob and Jared. Yep, those are the two <laughs> culprits. I think I remember that Jacob 
wanted to go for a bike ride. And how old was he? Four. Probably yeah, four. and I think he was used to going on bike rides with his older brothers, right? Yeah, we usually around rode the around the street. The neighborhood was these. It was a big giant figure eight, kind of a big section of row of houses, and another row of houses like C shape, I guess. So there's this big open parking lot between the two sections of houses. Mom could look out the front window and see us the whole time. As we got older, though, me, James, and Joseph, as long as we were together, or me and James, we could take our bikes and go on the streets or in the neighborhood. So that would be out of sight. Mom didn't want Jacob or the younger ones going. Well, one day Jacob was on a tricycle, and you know, little four-year-olds don't always pay attention to what they're told. And we, we were off out of sight. We did not realize when Jacob's following us on his tricycle. Well, so he's kind of like further behind. You yeah. Guys didn't realize. So once we're off and he's on his tricycle out there on the main road, he's like, well, I'm going where I want to. He heads right to the gate. Gates are manned, you know, by, by military police. So they see this little kid riding up and they're like, oh boy, what's going on? Aww. And uh, they, they call in and a cop car shows up and picks Jacob up, takes him back. And he's able to direct them home. My parents got in trouble. Dad especially. For that. Yeah, my dad got in trouble for that. They had to go to like parental courses. Yeah. Like what did they call it? It's probably different names. It's, it's um yeah. family policy center. I don't even it's a, a, a help. It's supposed to be there to help and if there are situations that come up, like maybe there's a divorce to help with families that are having troubles. So you know it's just default the rules. They had to parents had to go there. But people there really quickly realize these are great parents. We yeah, don't, don't I need think to be here. initially they were given like you're gonna have to go to this course or X or amount of time and then they went there a few times and they were like, That's Yeah, fine. It's it's all right. Yeah. We understand this mistake. <laughs> you're good parents. It happens, it's fine. exactly. Yeah. Not that people parents who go to this are bad parents, I'm not saying yeah, that. Yeah, like but, I said, it's there for help. Yeah. The second do you remember the, the second I one? I don't remember the second one. It's uh we lived in Guam. And our neighborhood was just a couple streets away from an open field, basically, where there was a uh, plane, yeah. a big B-2 bomber. It's one of the old World War II bombers. It's stationed out there on display, static display. And we always drove by going to the commissary there or to get gas. Little Jared would have seen it out the window. And just one day while we're at our house playing, Jared decides to trot off. He's like, I want to, in his head, he told us later, he wanted to go see the plane. <laughs> so he trots off. Then he knew you just go down the hill, cross the street, cross the other street, cross the grass, cross the main road, and then there's the plane. Right. Or the grass and the plane. Well, as he's crossing that other main road, uh, military police happen to be coming by. Like, what's this kid? He's in his I thought that there was up. some sort of, like, picnic or something. I think I remember that he actually went up to that group of people, you know, mosey on in here to this little party. I thought someone gave him, like, a drink, you know, like a soda or something. That that's, that sounds familiar. Yeah, the someone, drink part. someone ah, gave him a remember. drink, like a Pepsi or Coke or something. I remember that. <laughs> I don't know. And then somebody was like, wait a second. Whose who, kid is who, this? Whose kid? <laughs> but he was brought back by military police, so. Yeah. Dad would have gotten in trouble there. Military child privileges. What, if our, what are our privileges? So that one is the military ID, great privilege. And that lasts until you're 20 or 21? Um... Yeah. 21. I thought so. Yeah, 21. Oh, well, 21. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so the benefit of that, if you're not even living at home anymore or whatever, you still get those military mm -hmm. base privileges to get on base and shop on base for those better prices and just items that just aren't in other yeah. stores up until you're 21. Yeah, for us growing up before Walmart, it was the BX. That's where you got really good deals. And they had just about everything. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff on base. There's a bowling alley. There's usually a gym, library. There's always a gas station. Yes, oh, and the gas is always a lot cheaper. And there's usually like a few fast food restaurants like McDonald's and Subway and Burger King. Are usually the typical. Oh, and the see. military bank. Yeah. That was and that, they had a really nice setup. It's just all those just little. It's like kind of like a little city. There's normal stuff that you do in the civilian world, but on base, just there's just base. a little easier, a little more convenient. Right. Uh, making friends and leaving friends. When we travel a lot, we get to make a lot of new friends but then also because we're traveling a lot we leave those friends less so for me because i'm an introvert but she can definitely give you that friendly yeah um <laughs> i think i've been asked before like how hard was it leaving these friends over and over again you make new friends you leave them you make new friends you leave them that was one that i always made friends with people i had lots of friends and it always was sad leaving friends i think i cried every single time we moved but i always just was excited 
for that new adventure. I always viewed moving as a new adventure. You know, I'm gonna get a new room, a new house, new place, new environment. Well, that was one thing that always drastically changed was our like geographical environment because we would move like from California to Delaware, from Washington to Guam. Yeah. And so that was such an adventure. That's, Pine forest yeah. to the jungles of Guam, from the jungles of Guam to the deserts of Southern California, mm -hmm. from the deserts of Southern California to the, the deciduous green Delaware. and beaches of Delaware. Yeah. It was very different. And then to South Carolina, and there are beaches there, but we live more inland South inland, Carolina. Inland, sandy, grassy hills and... Yeah. Ugly pine trees. <laughs> yeah, a lot of sand and pine trees in that area. Loads of farms. Loads of farms. Yeah. Country, the country. Right. Um. Do you do you ever remember it being hard leaving a specific friend? Can you think of? See, I didn't. When I, my younger years, I didn't make close friends. I just, I know now know this because I'm in a more introvert type personality. I was able to make close friends um, as an older person. Well. As a teenager, I made a few. I'm used to moving, so when it came time to like move to college, move to the military, yeah. move back again, it, I was just like, all right, moving again, going right. to move on, we'll see these people. And by that time, social media was beginning to become mm -hmm. a thing, so I was like, hey, we can still connect. Right. And I still do on Facebook, have yeah. contact with a handful of guys from back in the day, definitely people I went to college with. Right. But yeah, it was, it was an adventure too. I exa I love moving because yeah. it was, it was so new. So even coming from an extrovert, someone who does make friends, and I always like, I made a best friend in every state, you know, that I lived in. I was like, that's my best friend. You know, I always had close friends and it was fine. Like, well, I yes, one. it's one. sad moving from friends, but it was fine. You know, mm -hmm. I moved on. I was used to it. It was fine. It was life. Just moving and traveling in general. I mean, you know, like we said, the environment that we moved to would be different, but also the culture of the people just in the United Ooh, yeah. States. Wow. I remember the first time I felt culture shock, shock was moving from Delaware to South Carolina, which is only a nine hour difference. That was the biggest the culture shock, shock, and I can't say that word. But the reason is because in the South, their culture stuck out the most, I think, to me. For one, that was my teenage years, so I'm a little bit more observant at this age. And everyone down there had such a strong accent that was more prevalent than other accents, like California accents or a northern accent. To me, that was a little bit, it was more obvious. It was I heavier, think. yes. Yeah. Thicker. There's just certain things that they would do and say that, like, they're just so different from other places. They loved hugging you, even if you just saw them yesterday. That was one of those things that I was so new to. And very I, friendly. Yeah, very friendly. When you're driving around, if you barely think you recognize somebody, you're going to wave at them. Um, my impression, and I went to college first from Delaware to Greenville, South Carolina. So I was down there first, but I'm in the mountain territory. But pretty much the same. I'm used to, I don't know, I guess it's northern stuff. Maybe. The military culture is more reserved. And, yeah. and it, it would fit in with the mid-Atlantic and the northern way of doing things. But when you get down to the south, everywhere, everybody's so friendly. And our family was no longer so stationed friendly. on base and no longer in that military yeah. environment either down there yeah. because my dad had retired it before then and there would be a difference between if you were living in a community that hey this is your home you, you probably are going to live here most of your life whereas the military it's a culture of people are moving all the time so you have this you psychology yeah. this mindset of oh don't make too close friends necessarily because you're going to leave them but yeah i was just very impressed with everywhere literally everywhere you went it didn't matter who you met extremely friendly and right. I had strangers wave at me if they see if they, if you make eye contact it's it's polite to wave yeah and then when you deal with store clerks when you deal with any kind of paperwork in your office the receptionist they're so friendly everyone down there they'll refer they give each other pet names to strangers you know you're hun sweetie Honey, babe, baby yeah. even though you're a stranger some people that occasionally happens in other places too but in the South, it's it's it very much South. more regularly. Yes. Now, probably the actual biggest culture difference was moving to Guam. Yep. But I was so young that I didn't consider it a culture difference because I didn't really... That was the second place I'd ever lived. I was still really, really young. But to me, it was just like, oh, this is cool. <laughs> it's a lot of Filipinos. Yes. A whole lot of different Asian cultures that kind of met Koreans, Japanese, Chinese, Vietnamese that all just hodgepodge there. Yeah. Though it definitely seemed like there was a good chunk of Filipinos. Yeah. And almost all of them, because it's a U.S. territory, Guam, mm -hmm. almost all of them would eventually, they do, most of these people are now in the U.S. Yeah. They've got their citizenship. That's usually why they moved to Guam in the first place. Yeah, Guam is like the hub in the Pacific 
for international folk who want to become American. They come there, uh, move to the U.S. territory where they can gain their citizenship and then move over. Most of them, there's some that still live there, but yeah. most of and them have moved to the U.S. And then, of course, there's native Guamanians? Is that what you Guamanians, mean? yeah. We call, you can call them Guamanians. The, the natives of the island are called Chamorans, the Chamoran people. And they did have their own language and everything. But they were also, they're super friendly, like yeah. the Southerners, but yep. it's different. It's a different, it's a different kind yes. of openness. For example, all the time, it felt like like once a month, once every other month, we're getting invited to these huge parties huge. that somebody's having on the Just island. Just in their house. If you're the friend of a friend of a friend of a friend, you, you can, can be invited. Come. It didn't matter. And literally, two to three hundred people or more would show up to these parties, yeah. and there would be long tables piled high, buffet right. style, with all kinds of like food. Like, these people would specifically, like, remove furniture from their house and replace it with tables. <laughs> just yeah. Just because they knew people were coming. It was pretty normal for people to have, around their homes, lots of extra chairs, folding chairs, tables. Because you just did that. You gathered together and you, you invited everybody. When we did church functions, where we, we sometimes do stuff outside, a specific one, we went to the beach and we set up tables and we set up food. Yeah, the church that. folks are inviting strangers. Hey, come, yeah. come have some food. Come yeah. have some food. It's just what you do. I remember me and my friend, <laughs> I was at my friend's house in her neighborhood, and we were taking a walk down the street, and there was a neighbor having a party, and they invited us in. Since my friend knew this neighbor, yep. we were like, oh, yeah, sure. So we went in, grabbed some food, and left. And they were, like, cool with it. Like, that was fine. It wasn't That's... rude for us to go in there, have some food, mingle a little bit, and leave. I've talked about that around some Filipino friends that live here in Delaware at my church here in Dover. And they said, yep, that's the Filipino thing. So yeah. it's <laughs> out there, like I said, it's jungle. It is, it's a very, it's a mix because there's Americans that live there, Guamanians that live there. Of course, like I said, all the international folk. It's, there is first, there's a lot of first world amenities. Yeah. But there was third world. We drive places and there would be metal tin foil kind of like. Right. Or roofs. like little thatched huts and yes. things. It was the combination of right. third and first world favorite Heights. thing about Guam was definitely the array of beaches. Ooh, yeah. Each beach was different. Like sandy beaches, at least one brown sandy beach, a couple black sandy beaches. Some pebbly, rock, like pebbly rock, beaches. Yeah. And then the lagoons, you could walk out. That was awesome. Hundreds of feet. Like, you'd see the big coral reef sticking up past the lagoon. The lagoon is like two to four foot of water where there's coral and fish and stuff, but it's like pretty shallow and warm, really fun to play in. So fun. You cross the lagoon is where the coral comes up in these big mounds. We're talking like five to seven feet high. And then the waves are crashing on those. Right. So if you were to go beyond that, it would be deep. That's where it drops in. down to the deeper ocean. Yeah. All right. Well, now let's get to the stereotypes. Stereotypes. We Yay. looked up what stereotypes people thought about military lives, military people. So this is from the internet. We're not making Current day. stereotypes. Current day. The first one we found was... Military wives are unclean, lazy, and uneducated with lots of kids. So I did news, not know that that was a, a stereotype. I, I, De our mom definitely wasn't, right. and all the moms we knew were not. I never met a, a, a military mom, because I obviously had lots of military friends. Never met anyone that was, like, super messy or slot. No, like, not even... Kind of. Because of the thing we did, we were selling seized chocolate in the neighborhood in California, and then Olympia sales. We went to a lot of people's homes. Right. And Very just, nice from homes. From being in the church a lot, clean. there was a lot of military families and churches that we would go to. We'd go to older people's friends' houses. Like, my best friend when I lived in California, a military family, clean and just, I don't know, normal. That just seems odd to me. Next one is, the military doesn't pay taxes. Lies. And LES, this is a form for the military when you get paid. And it's all online now, but you can print them off, and I had some printed off. Oh, they definitely took out taxes. They took out all the taxes, you know, yeah. the big uh, federal income tax. You pay a little bit into the VA, and I think there was an insurance tax, and then your state tax. The place you don't pay taxes is overseas. Whenever you're deployed, it's one of the little benefits they give you because, you know, they want to thank you for being out in a dangerous place, being away from home, away from family. They give you a few extra benefits. You might get a little extra pay depending on where you are. But yes, you do not get, have to pay taxes when you're overseas, but that's it. Uh, the next one is, again, it's about military wives. Wives are stay-at-home moms. I mean, obviously, our be. mom was a stay-at-home mom. Mm -hmm. I mean, they certainly can be. There's a lot of wives nowadays that just work, whether they're husbands in the military or not. You know, just because you're in the military doesn't mean that your husband's making so much money that you're stable and you don't have to work. Like, 
I remember that our mom um, did go to work at one point. Is it, you know, it's well, still the a struggle. Six kids were getting to be teenagers at that point. It was dad's a staff sergeant. So think, you know, 1997, 98, staff sergeant pay, family of eight. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was tight. Yeah. We, we did um, make use of food stamps for a short mm -hmm. period of time. We, you know, she tried different things. She tried to take a job. She did. Yeah. And when she saw that there was problems, she was all right, I'm not going to do that. She tried working at home, Tupperware parties, Mary Kay That's stuff. True. I forgot like all other about different those. things. There were entrepreneur like at home that jobs. was very popular with military wives yeah. was stay at home yeah. job type things. So like yeah. the Mary Kay or MLM type jobs. That I feel like was pretty popular with military. If you're just a couple, or you got one or two kids, yes, like your uh, staff to... or techs aren't pay and hire is decent. It's, it's right. really good. And so the wife probably doesn't need to work, so she might just choose not to. She doesn't have to. And if you're like master sergeant and above, or of course an officer, yes, your pay is really good, and you're going to be living that definitely that middle class lifestyle, if not even upper middle class, if you're a higher officer or right. a high ranking enlisted. But those are rare. There's not that many of those. Right. Uh, staff sergeant and below. It's good pay, it is. But if you have a large family, yes, you might get a little extra for each kid balancing out because if you have an extra kid, right. especially as the years go, that's more money. That's more clothes to buy, food. You know, that so it's gonna was the out. other stereotype was that military families have lots of money and continue to have kids to get extra money. That yeah. is just untrue. Yeah. I've never heard of a family, a military family, having more kids so that they can get more money. It just evens out because yeah because the money they out. give you is you're going to be using it on your your yeah. kid and, and it is it's a good paying job but that's all it is is a good paying job i would almost use the word decent it's it is decent. It's, it is decent. it's not great it's decent like you might have a little extra money you can set aside for vacations speaking of officers though that was the other thing was that there's a misconception that officers wives are snooty. officers wives are snooty not from what we've seen from yeah, our the ones we met. I mean, one case we even uh, met the commander's wife, and she yeah. was so nice. Bought several things for us to help us raise money for our. We were doing swimming pool and summer camp. So, but yeah, we met, and then I've gone to church with some of them. It's just not true. <laughs> yeah, and military wives. They're the same as non-military wives. They're just people. <laughs> yeah, someone's gonna but, be snooty. It's just their push personality. It's yeah. not. At least in our experience, it, we didn't see it across the board with military wives. I'm sure there are some. But then, for that matter, and so many other categories, you can find snooty people. Well, that, that's, oh, oh there's one that more. That one, yeah. Military spouses cheat is a misconception. It does happen, but it also yes. happens if you're not military, too. It's not something that happens so much that you can just generalize and say that you're likely it's going to happen. No. And I was six years in the Air Force from 2007 to 2013. All, all the different, gracious, we had a shop of around 40 guys. And, and that would that would vary. So I probably got to know, I don't know, 200 some guys. Besides the greater CE group, because the civil engineer was my squadron, several hundred guys. And I don't remember if that happened in our squadron. If it did, it'd be like one or two times. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, these aren't all people with religious standard. In fact, right. m most of the guys I worked with didn't really care about religion. They were, they were good, generally good moral people. You know, if a person's willing to sacrifice for their country, join the military, that there's a good caliber of people that work. Cheating on your spouse is a moral issue, and I don't think that if you're in the military, you're more likely to be immoral. I don't I don't see the correlation there. I, you know, didn't and when we were in, and definitely not when we were younger. Than I mean, I'm guessing that maybe this assumption comes from people assuming that the men that are going off on overseas are going to, like, take advantage of themselves being not home. Like, maybe that's what they're trying to refer sure, to. Sure, some might, but it wasn't but it, again, a Again, that's it was, not something it's that's... It's the exception. It's not the rule. It's just a morality issue from that person, not this happens because you're military, you're more likely to cheat. No. I think there was one other category. Oh. Being Air Force. Yes. Air Force versus the other branches. You got to talk about that. I, I definitely had this uh, notion that Air Force was the best, and that was because that's what my dad was in. I don't even know that I realized that the National Guard was part of the military until I got older because it was like, Air Force, Air Force. But the reason you decided to go into Air Force, was it because Dad was in the Air Force? Yes, that would have been a factor. From what I could tell, just from looking briefly online, talking, talking to my dad, talking to others, there was a better overall set of benefits and career going into the Air Force. But it was just what I was familiar with, I guess, would have been the big controlling factor for why I joined mm -hmm. was like, I'm familiar with this. Right. My dad, my family was in 20 years. 
So I can do this. And I did. I, there was a lot of things that was easy to transition into. After being six years active duty, I now know that there are some things that are the same. And there are some things that are different. Uh, it's just because of the nature of, you know, the Navy has ships. They're at sea. The Army, whenever we have any kind of overseas active duty operation, they're over there in mass. So they'll be there for a long time. Whereas the Air Force, being in the air, we're, we're more support. So our deployments are shorter. That'd be a benefit. Just... When you compare all the little details, all the things that the bases, that the Air Force community, the different branches of their communities, how they took care of each other, the Air Force just does the most. The Army. Jared's in the Army. Jacob and the, his wife were in, the Marines. were in the Marines. And then Joseph and John Air Force. Air Force. And yep. my dad. Yay. That's the nephew. Yep, yeah, my son's done watching his movie. And I think we're done answering Yeah, I think questions. we did finish. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that was helpful. Again, if you have any other questions for us as military brats, definitely leave them in the comments below. And if you have any other suggestions for more collab videos, leave that in the comments below too. Well, I think that's it for today. All right, Bye. thanks for watching. Thank you.